Hello, my name is Steve Bigelow with the Candlestick Forum. The market is giving us a decision based upon its indecisive trading range. Today, we saw the Dow come up and just hit this resistance level. And there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, I say a whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of bullish trading. So that told us, especially with stochastics in the overbought area, to be a little bit cautious, not cautious, but I guess attentive to see if they were gonna close above this level, giving us a J-hook pattern. Obviously, when it started selling off, it told us they were resisting, resisting this level and that the bulls weren't in control just yet. This allows you to, with the uh, uh, graphics of candlesticks to, uh, to get a much more accurate reading of what's going on in investor sentiment as far as the overall market trend. Same scenario here on the NASDAQ. Came right up and you can see they basically uh, uh, closed or opened right here on the 34 EMA. A lot of people ask, why do you have the 34 on here versus the 20 or the 100? Because the 34 week works uh, reasonably well with uh, candlesticks. And the fact that it opened and then could not stay up above where they opened told us the bulls weren't there. This allows us to make another assessment that if this market starts trading off below the T-line, we might be wave one, wave two, going into wave three, meaning more downside, either back to this level or the same magnitude as wave three. Now, the importance of candlestick patterns and signals when we recommended RPTX, it was based upon the strongest candlestick signal, the kicker signal, which is our expectation, as we saw in the next couple of days of trading, is that it's still in this 45 degree to the upside. That's because the expected results of a kicker signal is a very strong change of investor sentiment, which usually leads to a lot more upside. This is what we uh, look for Look for this signal because this is the expectation uh, coming off that candlestick signal. So when we see something like this, we're much more attentive to see how they open the next day because this tells us there's been a major change of investor sentiment after supporting here at the 50, look for more upside. Again, these are situations or signals of human nature that put us in high probability trade setups. So when we have patterns like the fry pan bottom, what do we expect here? This is what we call the classic pattern, a fry pan bottom usually followed by a J hook, meaning wave one, wave two, notice how it's supported right on the T line, came back up through the resistance level everybody else is watching and it's continuing higher. And here's another element of the T line that makes pattern recognition so effective. What's our rule about a fry pan bottom J hook pattern? You stay long until you see a close below the T line. So even though you saw this big selling today, they didn't close it below the T line. That's just a high probability uh, result or reality that if you're in a pattern and they're not closing below the T line, you're still in an uptrend. So that T-line works just as effectively down here. Where was time to start closing out or taking profits on a short trade? On a bullish engulfing signal at a support level. What was the next thing we wanted to see to be a buyer? Positive trading. But the fact that they could not close above the T-line and they sold off again, told you you could re-enter your short trade with the prospects of more downside. Again, this is not rocket science. This is just knowing what the force of investor sentiment is doing, like we saw in Tesla. When they gap down below the previous day's open and start trading lower, that tells you there's a lot of force to the downside. Know what Tesla, or note what Tesla did today. Open positive, but immediately started selling off. The force is still to the downside. So knowing what should happen based upon candlestick signals, allow investors 
to make very profitable trades with a high degree of probability by knowing what the sell signals are, where the resistance levels are, and where it shouldn't be trading. So you could have shorted this one with a high degree of probability it was heading lower. So with the market not getting up through this resistance level, you're in the overbought area as far as stochastics. If they close back below the T-line, that's a pretty good indication that bearish sentiment is still in control of this market, that the uh, of everything that's overhanging the market, like the uh, interest rates, inflation, uh, supply lines, that's still all a major concern. Get ready to, to short because that would indicate a wave three. And you don't go drastically wrong, I'm sorry, drastically long until they can break up through this level. That'll be it. We'll see you in the chat rooms.